You're listening to the Superpower Podcast, Superpower Kids Edition, where author, philanthropist, and Superpower Kids founder, Neville Rekla inspires kids to discover their superpowers and change Hi the kids, world. This is your Superpower Kid, Neva Lee Rekla, and today I'm so excited for our interview. We are talking about how to become an entrepreneur, and I think that's such a great topic because when I was two and I became an entrepreneur, it changed my life forever. And our guest today, her name is Elisa Caprelli, and she knows just what that's like. She's an author of several books that have gone all over, and some of those books are Unicorn Jazz Coloring Books and Imparting Young Entrepreneur Minds. So yeah. without further ado, will you help me welcome our guest, Lisa Caprelli? Welcome. Hi. Hi, Neva. Hi. Thanks for being on. Yes. How exciting. Thank you. I'm so excited for this interview. Wonderful. Me too. So um, what are your superpowers? Well, I feel that ever since I was a little girl, probably around seven, I always loved to write. And I grew up really shy, really quiet, really introverted would be a proper word. And so I wrote a lot. I wrote a lot in the classroom when the teachers would say to journal a paragraph, I would journal three pages full of words. And so I, I feel that because I grew up really quiet and shy, that I learned how to observe the world. Because what do you do when you're not talking? You're yeah, watching. You write, you're right. watching. You're observing. So I picked up a lot. I've spent my life so far studying human behavior and uh, studying uh, what makes for good write, writing, for good talks. Um, and so I would say my superpower would be being able to take someone's vision into action steps, into something amazing. So when you tell me like what your vision is, I can, my superpower is I'm able to see it, think ahead, think of all the incredible connections I have and how we can make it not just a dream, but a reality. That's really cool. That's a good superpower to have. Thank you. A lot of people have trouble um, dreaming about that. And so they can't make it a reality from, for themselves yeah, or and for someone else. Very true. And a lot of people... They have an idea or they'll say, I have a million dollar idea. Well, your idea is worth zero unless you execute it. And that comes a really tremendous hard work, perseverance, yeah. uh, a great team to have behind you. Yeah, I agree. And that, again, is like such a great power to have because a lot of people don't, they can't look and see what they have. And they can't go, oh, I can make that my dream into a reality, you know? Right. Right, like you. Let me put the question back to you. When you had your idea to, to do what you do and, and, and look how, you, how young and amazing to have this platform, did you, how did you start with your idea? Well, for my business when I was two, I really just, I saw that my parents had business cards and I was like, I want to hand out business cards. <laughs> I didn't really know what they were at the time. And so... I had a conversation with my parents, and the original answer was no. But then we did make business cards for me. And then we realized I need to have a business for my business cards. Mm -hmm. And so I started selling Italian glass bracelets, which was really fun. And then here I saw my mom was doing Superpower Experts and doing her podcast. And we had a conversation. And she said, I don't really want to coach kids. And I said, no, mom, I would be coaching them. And that's why I'm here. Awesome. Congrats. Thank you. So what is your favorite book you've written so far? Okay, well, I'm partial between two, and I have them. So the first book is Unicorn Jazz. And who doesn't love unicorns? So when I first had the idea to write the book, remember, I, I'm a visionary. I had the idea. And I probably wrote it in about a week and then came oh, to wow. editing and inviting people. I know, I don't, I sometimes don't know how I do that. So, <laughs> um, my other book, Skip a Step here, that took two and a half years. Oh. So I just think, um, and, and we'll talk about that one because I know you wanted to talk about entrepreneurship, which that Skip a Step is in line for. Yeah. 
So unicorn jazz, um, I started researching the popularity of unicorns and girls and children of all ages started saying, I love it. I started putting posts about my sample cover out on my Instagram and Facebook and invited uh, people to the conversation. What's the best book cover? And then people, my friends and colleagues started reaching out to me saying, that's a great idea. How can I help you? All kinds of things. Um, so I knew I was onto something with unicorn jazz. And then I, you know, because my background is marketing and branding, I've done that for 25 years before I made the transition into, into becoming an author and helping other people author their books. I'm, I help teens author their books too. And maybe you want a book one day. <laughs> and so, um, I, th I thought of it like Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty is a brand. It's a trademark brand. And I thought no one has done a big brand around a unicorn. And so I, we want to be the pioneers of that, where unicorn jazz is known all over the world. Toys, T-shirts, merchandise, babies can grow up with it. And the incredible lessons we have in the stories that we, I will continue to write with my amazing illustrator, Davey Villalobos. He's in my hometown of El Paso, Texas as well. And uh, so each book has a lesson and it's, and it's for children, it's for parents, it's for teachers. We also have a unicorn jazz song. I mean, it's just, an, it's a unicorn phenomena. That's really cool. And what, my book that's coming out this year, it's called When Pigs Fly, The Parent's Guide to Inspire Your Young Entrepreneur. Oh, it good. took me... <laughs> How long? Um, about around two years. Okay, like, that's good. The, yeah. A friend suggested that I do it, and keep on doing I was like, it. okay. And you can. So, you can yeah. do anything you want today thanks to technology and innovation. Look at you're doing this interview. You're, you're mm -hmm. amazing. And, and children of all ages, my son, uh, Trey Jam, he has a popular YouTube channel, Trey Jam, and he does Try Not to Laugh Challenges. And he started at age seven because I – one, it's it's himself. He had the motivation and desire. It sounds like you, and he self taught himself. I gave him I put, gave him the tools, the the computer, the software, and uh, he learned how to use it. and And today, his channel has over a hundred thousand subscribers, over like wow. seventy million views. It just it's just growing, and now he is becoming an influencer because of technology. That's really cool, and. Like, and it's also because, like, you have an idea. Like we were talking about before, he had the idea to make a small YouTube channel, and now it's really big. Right, right. And, but, it, it, you know, when people think they could just start a YouTube channel and do what he's done, and it's, it takes tremendous dedication and a lot of focus, and, and he has that. And there's a lot of YouTubers. There's YouTubers that have more following than that. Um, but it's really cool that we could do these things today, write a book, do shows, use technology, have a YouTube channel. Yeah, it is. And it's because we've had the dream and the dedication to doing yeah. it. Because if we were to sit around and go, I want to do a podcast and YouTube channel. Well, mm -hmm. you can't do that when you're sitting on the couch eating Pringles all day, you know? Right. And oftentimes when his friends are asking him to play a game, then mind you, he does play video games. and. But sometimes he'll say, I'm working on my YouTube channel because that's making me money. Yeah. So, and that's fun. Like for me, my podcast and doing business is a lot of the times I get asked, well, do you do regular kid things? And I go, this is a part of my normal. This <laughs> is yeah. what I do. This is my yeah. fun. This is my play. Right. So. You're, you're reaching out to people. Obviously, we've never met till today, and I'm so honored to be on your show. And um, yeah, this is your, you. I wish I could have done, done what you're doing when I was <laughs> as young as you are. And, and people just re don't realize that you can really do anything you want when you set your mind to it, get the right people believe in you. And if you don't know how, ask for help. People will help you, especially when you're younger. Exactly. So we have to take a quick break, but I definitely want to get talking about this more. So can you tell our listeners where they can go to find out more about you? Yes, you go to lisacaprelli.com, my first and last name, lisacaprelli.com. You can find awesome. my Instagram and all that stuff. Definitely go check that out because she is such an amazing person and is so inspirational. So we've been talking about how to become an entrepreneur with Lisa Caprelli. We'll be right back. <laughs> 
Are you here to change the world? Do you talk about things like vibration, frequency, awakening, and consciousness? Are you pretty sure you have superpowers? The Superpower Net is unlike normal coaching programs and conscious communities. We provide training, intuitive guidance, peer-to-peer learning, intensive one-on-one coaching, and a high vibrational network of people just like you. When you join the Net, you get 24-7 access to a collaborative group of people who support you as you master your personal power and unlock your superpowers. If you are ready to use your superpowers to change the world, then join the Superpower Net today. Visit superpowerexperts.com slash the net to learn more. Okay, we're back and we've been talking with Lisa Capelli about how to become an entrepreneur. Yes. So we actually get to do something I really love doing and it's called funny FaceTime. Okay. So we get, to, we get to make our funniest faces in three seconds. You ready? Yes. Three, two, one. <laughs> My sisters would be good at this. That's a good funny face. Uh, that's one of my favorite parts about the interview. I love Except talking with the people. <laughs> So uh, we were talking a little bit about like following your heart and doing what you want pretty much. Yes. So I think it's like so powerful when I see someone else going, no, I'm going to make a difference. And they get up and they go and start a YouTube channel or they start a podcast, start writing a book, you know, Mm -hmm. it's it's really cool to see. I was talking with um, another kid. His name was Alexander Jimenez. And he does amazing things. He does Smiles Against Cancer. And it's, he goes around like and gives toys and makes kids happy when they have cancer. Mm-hmm. And we got the chance to talk here on Zoom. And it was such an amazing conversation because I was, he was another kid entrepreneur that I got to talk with. Awesome. Yeah. It's always, it's always cool seeing other people. I I recommend this book. I want to send it to you. I also have a journal that goes with it. So it's a journal and yes. And, um, so skip a step I wrote, it took me two and a half years. As I said earlier, um, you can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. And um, it's compiled of 13 interviews from different entrepreneurs, leaders. My story is also in the back because I'm an entrepreneur and and I gained so much research from interviewing so many people. I just want you to read it. Um, I have Mitch Free in here who talks about how he struck a deal with Jeff Bezos in a company he had and he gave away $2 million, a $2 million giveaway party. And he did it based on the people who started with him, believed in his vision and did the hard work. Joe Garner, six-time New York Times best-selling authors in this book. Um, there's so many amazing Michael Gerber, um, author and uh, creator of the E Myth series. And so, I my questions were, uh, what is the meaning of life? What makes for happiness? Uh, nobody said it, made, it was easy, right? That they just you, you know started this idea for business and it was easy and they rose to the top. That was said none of these, said no one and other subsequent in, uh, people I asked in my research. So the common things I found were, it, you know, uh, being an entrepreneur, it's a risk and we know that. Yeah. Um, Jim Fitzpatrick from San Diego Magazine, who's also in the book, um, he, he bought and sold Entrepreneur Magazine at one point and, and different ventures. And he says, there's no such thing as job security. You are your job security. So a lot of times, even when people have that nine to five job per se, they might think that they have it. And, and, and true, they, they do, but anything can change. A recession can change. You know, uh, to, Uber can come in where taxi drivers are no longer around as much. Um, yeah. Recent happenings with the, with the government shut down, you know, so it's for me, I, I feel that when you have a vision and dream and it's purposeful and it can help other people as the um, entrepreneurs in our books, you know, said the same thing. Um, it's just a mo- lot more fulfilling. It, it brings to joy and happiness. And some of the questions I asked were, what does c- to create mean? And um, um, sorry, let me, 
the answer was to create. So I asked Michael Gerber and other people, and it was kind of my answer too, but I wanted to know what other people's answers were. Yeah. Is what is the meaning of life to you? And their answer was to create. And I would get chill because I feel like you're creating, I'm creating, and so many people, we have the power to do something, even if it's a little different, or it's to help to support someone who has created a great vision to give back and to give purpose because I grew up really poor. I didn't always have this this skill set and the knowledge and connections I have today. I, I had to work for it. Yeah. And it and that's the biggest part about being an entrepreneur is you have to work for something and take that leap of faith and know, you know what? If I fall, I'm gonna glide one day, you know? Right. And it's just the falling and getting back up, falling and getting back up. Right. Because when you're an entrepreneur, you take the risk of, you know, you're going to fall a couple of times. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Joe Garner writes in this, in this chapter, uh, the good Lord looks after the ignorant and persistent. And if you're the right mix of both, you can be very successful. So he has a story about how he needed to, uh, uh, his first best-selling book. And he says it started really with an idea. And when the books would arrive, to his house, you know, book after book, because he's done many books. In the boxes, he would just stop and look at the books and just say, to think it started with an idea. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's really cool. That is really, really cool. I like that. So, one, I definitely want to get that book because I think that would be a great book for me to read. Yeah. Um, it sounds really cool. Yes. And so I have a question for you is what would you say to a kid if they wanted to start business, but they were maybe too scared to do it? The first thing I'd say is find someone who believes in you. Find a mentor. Mm -hmm. In my book, Unicorn Jazz, and yes, it's a plug, but the Unicorn Jazz meets a, a, a character, and I wanted to, it's a boy character. I wanted to, this book to be for boys and girls, and the book, the character is called Woof the Crow. And so she's shy in the story. She feels like she doesn't have friends or doesn't belong, which I think many of us can relate to, including me when I was younger. So Wolf the Crow believes in her and says, you have a magical voice. And, and, and then so she goes into the playground in the story and, and people notice her story. So it takes someone to believe in you. I, for me, I've had many people that believe in me and I call them today because of the story Wolf the Crow. And I want to point out with her tale, her, um, it's a musical note. So that's the, the special uh, copyright we have for that. So no one can cop our uni our, copy our unicorn. Um, but I would say to get someone that believes in you, Neva, um, get someone, you know, if you want to go and become a restaurant owner, go ask a restaurant owner if you can shadow them. If you want to be a doctor, ask a doctor if you can shadow them. Interview them. People love to be interviewed. They it's very rarely that I'll say no to an interview. Someone's asking me, people love to talk about themselves. And the more you, you know, of course, some people can be super busy. They can't talk one-on-one -on -one with anyone, but there's a lot of people in your in a community, wherever you are, if you're afraid of, of doing something, just go out and be bold and brave and ask yeah. questions. Exactly. Cause that's the only thing you really can do is just be brave because if you sit in a corner and hide all day, you're not going to be able to make right. a difference like you want to. Right. I go around the beach. I live in Huntington Beach, California, and I give away stickers, and I tell people about my book, Unicorn Jazz, like, see, be bold and brave. <laughs> and I'll go up to parents and, you know, give the stickers to the, uni to the unicorn to children, and, and um, most 98% of people thankful and wanted. Some people say no, which I think, like, why don't you want a free sticker? But, okay, maybe they think, you know, I want something else for them. But, mm -hmm. but the point is, like, I'm not, you know, afraid of rejection because if, if two people out of a hundred say no to me, that's pretty good odds. Exactly. Um, I did a podcast, not a podcast, a business, and it was called Hot Clothes for Kids. It was, when I was younger, I used to be like a little fashionista diva, kind of. Uh -huh. And I just had like a fascin fas fascination of like designing my clothes, how I want them. I yeah. still kind of do. And so the problem was for some people is that I had the word hot in my business and I was, I believe, five. And the fact that I was wearing, I was like cutting my 
a long sleeve and longer shirts into a crop top. And a lot of people were like, eh, and would put hate in the comments. And it was really hard for me at the time. But then, like you said, two people out of 100 yes. saying no to me. And then there was a, I would always scroll a little more and see these people, go Neva, you rock, you know. And so it was always like. Yeah, you got to. You, go ahead. You can walk through the hate. Mm-hmm. But on the other side is always going to be that one person that supports you. Absolutely. No, it's so true. And, and so that's what I mean. I don't, I live my life by that. And, and it, you go with the people that believe in you. And those are the friends that you want anyways in your side. Exactly. Cause you don't want a friend that like, who really wants a friend that's going to like, no, you shouldn't try to make a difference in the world. You're only going to fall. <laughs> like who wants a friend that's going to say that to you? You know? No, it's nice. It's like, you know, the, we, we all, a lot of us use social media today and we, you know, it, when someone shares their good news, we say awesome, we say congrats and, and genuinely, you know, we hope everyone means it, but I'm so happy when I see other people's good news and it inspires me yeah. to keep on doing great work in the world. Exactly. I, so I'm on social media, I'm on Facebook and Instagram, LinkedIn, and that's where we met actually. Yeah. And I'm on all those places, but it's interesting because I'll see someone posting about something that's maybe a little lower frequency. Maybe it's like about an animal being hurt or abused. And I look at it. I'm like, that's not, I don't want to look at that. That doesn't make me very happy. So yes. I hide it and I keep on scrolling. And then I find cute video about someone yeah. making a difference you know I love that you say that frequency that's a you're right what does that mean to I know what it means but I want you to share with with listeners what does that mean so for me it means basically kind of like I'm very woo woo um kind of like the energy um so high frequency is you may be a little bit happier you're positive to people yeah. Yeah. and you're oh, you're in a good space like nothing can bring you down yeah. But then when you're in the low frequency, basically, you're down in the dumps, you're upset, you're angry, and someone could say one comment, and you are very mad, pretty much. Yes, and I want to add to that. So, yeah, so we ever find that someone you talk to, whether you go to school or, or, and you meet them, and they're just so happy, you want to be around them. So they're like shining, radiating energy. Versus someone's like who's always down or feels, and then, you know, it seems to attract, like attracts like. So I agree yeah. that, you know, if you can live your life, and a lot of times it's the thoughts in our heads. We have, we're in control of our thoughts, each one of us. No one can control our thoughts except us. And even if exactly. things happen or there's, there's always going to be losses and struggle in life. But what I've learned that I like even teaching people is that you can compartmentalize it. I look at it. Something comes across me that I didn't want. I'm having a great, really good day and I have to deal with something. In, in business, you always have to deal with something. Um, something goes awry. I deal with it. I don't ignore it and, you know, just let it pile up. But I look at it as I file it away in my mental folder, like, like a filing cabinet, the days of filing cabinet. And then I, that, it goes in that drawer. And, and, and then I'm able to go back to the, the place I want to go because – if you focus on negative moments or thoughts versus happy and creating, like you said, vibration, creating that, you're, you're going to get one or the other each, each day. And the exactly. choice is which one do you want? Yeah, exactly. And something that I always go by in my life is treat people the way you want to be treated and that it always works. I have one situation where I treated someone Yes. The way I thought I should treat them, but then it didn't go well for me. I was, we were at a restaurant, like dog park thing, uh-huh. and we were there, and I was playing with this little boy. And for some reason, I thought I could say, You can't hurt me, you can't hurt me. Then he punched me in the face. Oh my gosh. And I deserved it because I told him that he couldn't hurt me. But right. Okay. He's like, watch me. Well, you were bold and brave, but you know, it went awry. <laughs> yeah. 
But then there's other times where I'm I'm super nice to someone and they're nice back, you know? Like, you can't go up to someone and be a jerk to them and expect them to be nice to you. And that's always how it is. Like, even if it's not a person, if it's in business, treat your business, treat your life how you want it to treat you. No, it's so true. And people will be willing to help you more. Exactly. Because I don't want to help someone when they're not being nice in nice. their business or to me because mm-hmm. then I'll be like go find someone else to help you that's in that space Very you know true. Yeah. Yeah. so did you always want to be an entrepreneur I did not know what an entrepreneur was when I was your age I um, as I said earlier, I grew up in El Paso, Texas, a border town, and just very close was Mexico. And so I grew up in a town of little opportunity, really. Um, and then just a circumstance I was born into, which, you know, many people have struggles and, and you know, my story certainly isn't the, the poorest story or the most struggle story growing up. But I had incredible love with my family, my mom, my sisters, my brother. So we did have that. And I often sometimes say, how do you know you're poor unless someone tells you? And, and it really, I didn't know because we had fun. We giggled all the time, <coughs> played imagination games. And I think that imagination that I really went to a high level has helped me today to be creative. I know that when I moved to California about 18 years ago, I, I noticed a lot of the entrepreneurs, I had already built my life helping other um, CEOs I worked for in, in marketing capacity and just having the idea of what more could I do for your company. So I I brought that DNA here and uh, started up my first company with a partner. And it was was a very successful company. It grew really rapidly, crazy rapidly. It was just a really good time in in my life and the business and the marketing we were doing. Um, So I I know that I always wanted to to do more. And I know that for any opportunity that was given to me, I wanted it. So even at my entry-level jobs, I didn't just go, oh, I'm here for this job. I always wanted to do more. And again, as shy as I was back then, which I'm not shy anymore, um, I just would go to the manager or I'd go to the owner and I would, I would, you know, I'll be, I would want, you know, be friends with them as much as I could. And not, not one person ever said, you know, no, you can't learn more. You can't do more here. Not one person said, I find Eva that a lot of uh, people and in, through the years when I work with employees and when I've had my own employees through the years, uh, a lot of them just treat their job as a job and then they, they feel like, well, they don't have to give it their all because it's not their thing. So they, they have this like clock in clock out mentality. And I say, whatever job you work with, or, you know, pretend that it's your company, pretend, what would you do differently? Go learn all the job, the, the positions you can. Most companies will let you again, there's depending on what it is. And, uh, so I was always wanting to learn everyone's job. Teach me, what are you doing? When I got my work caught up, I was always the first one done with work. And people would say, you can't be done that quickly. That's supposed to take you a month. I was done in three days. And I'd say, well, what am I going to do the rest of the month? So I go around asking questions. What do you do? Show me how you do it. And and so I have a a tremendous skill set because of that, because of that, because I didn't want to be bored. I wanted to do more. I asked a lot of questions and I taught myself through them, you know, how to, how to do more. So it's a tremendous skill set to have. Yeah, that's really cool. It, it is really because some people live their lives and they don't ask questions when they really have a million buzzing around in their head. And it's always safe to ask. Like someone, no one's going to just ask the question. They're not going to just ignore you. Right. And if you are, if you are more on the shy or introverted side, as I used to be, that's probably why I, I loved in, uh, studying human behavior and, and I have a degree in social psychology, is I wanted to understand why sometimes the people that were the good talkers, you know, called the gift of the gab, they did get ahead. And I would be like, wait a minute, I have a better skill set than that person. How come they got the promotion? And, it, you know, of course, your personality, being able to use your words and, and voice them well is part of being a good leader. So I, I learned, I went to, you know, I went to, um, you know, uh, I went to meetings where great speakers were being learning how to speak and give presentations to masses of people. They would get critiqued. And I used to say, Oh my God, I could never do that. I don't want people to critique me. 
I could never do that. And I learned how to do that. And, and you have to, you know, you have to accept criticism and feedback. Exactly. Um, I, I had a radio show on live FM and AM in the early 2000s, reaching millions of people. And my voice, I used to talk in this because I was nervous. I used to say, hi, welcome everybody. I had this high pitch voice that, <laughs> and today I, I don't get nervous. I'm, that's when I, I'm proud of myself when I can go on a show, do an interview, speak, and I'm not nervous uh, because I, that was something I had to learn. I can completely resonate with that because whenever I go up on stage, if I'm speaking from here and I'm up here and my voice is yeah. a lot higher, also you run out of breath faster because you're not down in your stomach. Yeah. That's what I've been taught to do is speak in your stomach because yeah. one, you don't run out of breath and you can speak clearly to the people you're talking to on stage and just life. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I can it's, a learning, it's a learning skill, and I, I, it took me a long time, very long yeah. time. Um, I wish that's something I could have learned in, in when I was younger in school, but I think I needed to go through those experiences, and, yeah. and uh, I feel that much more um, better about, about speaking today. And, it's, you know, obviously when you speak, it's, too, it's not for yourself. I, one of the tips for me that made me get over being nervous is that when I'm giving a message, it's not about like, I already know my own message. I don't need to give it back to myself. I could just look in the mirror. I'm there to deliver something, reach at least one person. If I can inspire one person, give enough change to people, show them the vision, which I do often and daily, that is so meaningful. But if they can't hear you, if they don't understand you because you are nervous or, or your message wasn't compelling, I look at it as, you know, you have all this education, Lisa, personal development, education, and I want to do a good job. So part of it is, is your voice and your delivery. So when I realize that I'm here educating you, uh, the nervousness goes away yeah, completely. It does. It really does. Because you know you're doing a good service to someone else. Exactly. Yeah. So we sadly have to wrap up. I really want to keep talking, but we don't have all day, sadly. <laughs> I know. Um, thank you for having me on this wonderful yeah. show. Thank you for coming on. It was such a blast. Can you tell our listeners one more time where they can go to find out more about you? Yes, please follow our great work, uh, unicornjazz.com, for all the books and all the series and books and songs to come. We have a special unicorn jazz song that you can YouTube. With, um, we're getting it professionally recorded with Carrie Kasem in a month. Uh, and um, so Unicorn Jazz, it's near and dear to my heart. It's going to be everywhere. So I want you, you saw it on one of these first shows here on Neva's show. Skip a step. Uh, my website is easy. You can find me on social media pretty easy. Lisa Caprelli, C-A-P-R-E-L-L-I.com. Awesome. And then, then again, definitely go check it out because she is just so inspirational. And thank you again, Lisa, for coming on my show. So will you join me in the sign-off? Yes. Okay. Remember, kids, we all have superpowers, and we, we can, can change, change the, world. the world. Awesome. Thank you so much again for coming on. Thank you, sweetheart. Bye. Time. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Superpower Up podcast, Superpower Kids edition. Go now to superpowerkids.com and discover your superpowers today. It's